Hello and welcome to an interesting topic Delheim's model of we can also say Delheim's function of design of so we can say Delheim's model of speaking or language look here when we say Delheim's model of speaking here the word speaking does not refer to only verbal way of communication here the word speaking does not stand only for talking each individual letter in the word speaking is written in capital letter and every letter has its own significance and importance therefore it is a very comprehensive word it does not refer to only oral way of communication so in totality if you try to interpret the word speaking it refers to language so sometimes we can also call delheim's model of speaking delheim's model of language and what is more important in this model of language social and cultural context is very important for a successful communication to take place we continue our discussion now we have eight important letters in delheim's model of language as i just talked about the word speaking which does not refer to only oral way of communication verbal way of communication and what are those eight letters if you look at we have s we have p we have e we have a we have k we have i we have n and we have g and if you put each one of them together it becomes a speaking so it's a model of language it's a function of language now let's discuss each one of the letters its significance and importance its meaning and its relevance in detail we have the word speaking model of language the letter s stands for setting the letter p stands for participants the letter e stands for ends the letter a stands for act the letter k stands for key the letter i stands for instrumentalities the letter n stands for norms and the letter g stands for genres now let's discuss importance of each letter what does it convey what does it mean what does it refer so we continue our discussion take the first letter that is s which stands for setting and what is this when we say setting setting may be your place may be your background maybe your time means at what time at what place in which background the communication took place that is the idea and your place your background your time all together it may be a campus it may be a school it may be your home and it may be hotel it could be any place so one of the most important elements in this model of language is background is setting the place you choose the time you choose and that's very important without background communication cannot take place we continue and we'll move on to the next that is to say p what does it stand for it stands for participants and when we talk about participants they refer to addresser who addresses who is the person addressee who's being addressed who is the hearer who is the listener who is the receiver the speakers hearers which i just talked about all these elements all these words could be included within the category of participants and broadly you can also say the participants may be students may be friends may be customers may be shopkeepers may be your members of family there could be anyone it could be referred to any person we continue our discussion that is to say e what does it stand for it stands for ends and it refers to goals refers to objectives refers to purpose reasons I mean there must be some goals for any communication to take place goals are very important objectives are very important if you don't have any goal if you don't have any purpose you don't have any reason the communication itself cannot prop up communication cannot exist communication does not happen in a vacuum we must have goals we must have something to achieve something to attain something to talk about that is the idea here now we continue the next that is to say a it stands for act and act may refer to two things two ideas the first is form and the second is content and the form is all about manner and the content is more about matter idea thought manner is about how we order a set of words to express your style your way of expression your way of speaking okay and content what we say matter idea or thought is about what we want to convey what we want to say what we want to express what we want to share and together if you put meaning is conveyed to the listener to the reader to the hearer to the participants now we continue to the next element of this 
model of language that is K. It stands for key. And what is this? It refers to mood, tone, your state of mind. And this is very important because your state of mind is an important factor in the way you communicate with the people. You talk with the people. You express something in writing and so on. And you can refer them to like your happy mood or your tone is happy or your state of mind is happy or likewise sad or humor. A state of mind is very important in communication to take place. Now we continue with some more ideas about this model of language that is I. It stands for instrumentalities. They refer to channel or medium. And when we talk about channel, when we talk about medium, means it is through what you want to communicate through what you want to express and share that is to say whether it is a prose style prose way of writing prose way of talking whether it is poetic style what we say poetry or poetic way of expression or in a dramatic form what we call drama in a story form a storytelling so there are different ways and means what we call channel or medium through which we communicate sometimes as a speaker as a writer as a poet, as a teacher, as a student, as a normal person, as a normal human being. So we must have the channels, we must have the instrumentalities through which we communicate our language. We express our language. We continue our discussion. That is to say, we have the next one, N. It stands for norms. And what does this refer to? It refers to social norms. Cultural milieu, they are guiding principles. Without social norms, without cultural milieu, you will not be properly guided in what way to talk about, in what way to carry on your ideas. For what? To the people. That is what we mean to say is how we talk in office, how we talk in college, how we talk when we are at home. Because they set a social norms for us. They provide guiding principles to us in what way to talk. Whether your tone is formal or informal. Whether you are becoming too official in talking or unofficial in talking. So these are the most important elements when we talk. When you are in the market, when you meet your friends, you talk in a different manner. But the same friend when you meet in the office of your principal, your social norms guide you to talk differently. So norms are very important, guiding principles in the way we communicate, in the way we express our language. We continue our discussion. That is to say, we have G and it stands for genres. And what are they talking about? It may be interview, it may include gossip, proverbs, prayers and so on. So these are eight fundamental principles through which we communicate with the people. We express our language. Delheim's model of speaking is a linguistic model and this model in modern time has attained a lot of attention. Hope you understand the concept. Thank you and goodbye.